Well, the Western media continues to ignore the genocide that's been unfolding in Donetsk, Donbass region over the last nine years. And over the weekend, NATO and Ukraine bombarded uh, residential areas using U.S.-made HIMARS weapons. Once again, this is a common occurrence that is almost happening daily. They hit a science institute among other residential buildings. Patrick Lancaster has been covering this genocide for the past, the past nine years. He was there the moment NATO and Ukraine started launching these attacks. Take a look. The uh, shrapnel from the whole, uh, rocket seemed to be a Western supplied HIMARS. And this hole that we saw here is indicative of uh, a HIMARS. We see them come down and just rip into the ground right after they explode, or sometimes they explode after. There's three, at least, different settings for the HIMARS. One is they explode in the air, air burst. Others pound through and then explode, and others exploding on impact. Independent journalist and war correspondent Patrick Lancaster joins us now from Donetsk. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us. You know, we featured your work on our show for many years here, but it's great to finally have you here on the show, and thank you for your amazing journalism. Thank you very much, uh, Clayton, for having me. It's an uh, honor to be here. I've watched you guys a lot, and you guys are doing uh, great things for the uh, the push of uh, what the mainstream media is ignoring. So over the weekend, of course, we saw, we just played this footage, uh, again, another round of attacks. This is a, a daily occurrence. And of course, uh, the reports have been that after the fall of Bakhmut, that attention would drive towards uh, this area, to the area that you're currently in in Donetsk. Um, what are you seeing on the street? What are you seeing in terms of attacks? And what are you hearing among the people as you go door to door and see how they're living their lives? Well, um, of course, the attacks, as always, are just horrible on uh, the civilians. Um, if we can we could talk all day about the different attacks that happen every day in Donetsk. Maybe not every day on the center, but every single day in the city of Donetsk, there are attacks on the civilian population by Ukraine. I do my best to cover as many as I can, um, but of course I can't get to all of them. But if we we talk about this particular uh, uh, case that you just uh, showed, to give a little bit more in-depth in on it, um, I had actually just returned back from the front line. I was uh, just 60 meters from Ukrainian positions and re uh, spent a night there and returned back to Donetsk. And I was shocked to see how much more intense the war was in the center of Donetsk than it actually was on the front line. Um, and I had just been back in Donetsk for 20 minutes and heard a few explosions got as much information as I could on the location, raced to the site, which was, as you said, the Science Research Institute that had took a direct hit from the high marsh to the roof, which instantly killed a woman. But uh, I arrived on the scene about 20, 25 minutes after the initial attack. And this is what Ukraine did. They waited, they made one attack with three high marsh, waited about 20, 25 minutes until the first responders came to the scene, journalists and first responders. And then as you, uh, as seen in my uh, footage, uh, I counted about six, I guess, uh, additional high marsh that's, uh, I uh, came down right almost in the same spot right after the fire department, emergency workers and journalists uh, showed up on the uh, scene, which is a clear violation of the Geneva Convention, fire uh, waiting to and firing on first responders. But this is what we see from Ukraine on a daily basis, just uh, the hammering of civilian areas in Donetsk and other areas across uh, uh, the regions that uh, Russia is con in control of. Um, and it's just horrible to see on a daily basis. You're there. Do you see? So the uh, big question from from a lot of folks in the independent media is like, well, where is Russia in this right now? Obviously, this is Russian territory now. The people voted to become part of Russia. Russia sees this as Russia. The, maybe the Western NATO doesn't see this as part of Russia, uh, but nevertheless, it, it is. And so where is Russia in this? Where are the Russian forces we see in your videos here? Uh, Russian military inspectors are inspecting the crash site where are these HIMARS, uh, but where are the forces to propel those attacks against the people of Donetsk? 
Well, the main uh, problem with the attacks on Donetsk is Evdivka uh, and the Ukrainian controlled uh, territory in the uh, area of Evdivka. And the fact is that these uh, HIMARS um, uh, uh, rocket launchers are mobile launchers, just like the Red, uh, Oregon Smirch uh, Soviet made uh, rocket launcher. They're all mobile. So a lot of people think, why don't they just knock, why doesn't Russia just knock out these launch sites? Well, that's because they'll come out of the woods somewhere, drive to a field, fire, and then within uh, uh, a minute and a half, they're already gone in a new position. So it's, uh, it's a game of cat and mouse. And as we know, uh, uh, Russia is uh, in um, uh, uh, pushing, as we saw Wagner uh, took Bakhmut, and and that is to kind of go back to your other uh, question. There is definitely an increase in attacks after uh, Bakhmut uh, was uh, taken control of by Wagner forces, and in Donetsk, it kind of happens every month or so for the last 15 months. Um, for a week or two, Ukraine will just start lobbing constantly on the center of Donetsk, just knocking out dozens of uh, civilian homes uh, every day. And then it'll just kind of calm down and they'll move on to a different uh, tactic. And they're just wasting all of the Western people's tax money by bombing civilians. I mean, this is, there's no question that the tax, the tax funds in the United States and other countries are exactly funding the killing of civilians, the injuring of civilians, and the destruction of civilian properties and civilian infrastructure. There's no uh, question about that. Uh, but as far as Russian uh, soldiers uh, go and the Russian forces, there's still somewhat a, a little bit of a, a separation. They are all merging the, as, as far as the Donetsk People's Republic, Lugansk People's Republic forces, and the regular Russian army. They're starting to merge. The governments are merging, but there's still a separation. Like, um, a few days ago, I was uh, with the internal forces, not necessarily part of the Minister of Defense of the DPR, but a kind of a different branch. And in this, my reports, I kind of uh, have them explain the differences of the different branches, who who's with Russia, who's merging with what kind of uh, battalions and groups. So there's more information coming out of it. But even for the governments now, it's all a new thing for them merging together and who's where. And then you've got other third uh, kind of third party things like Wagner, which is the, you know, a private uh, commercial uh, uh, fighting company. So right. it's a process. Like the process when the Donetsk People's Republic uh, made their own government in 2014. Um, so it's in the yeah. works. In the works. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. And when you're there in uh, Donetsk, when you were out there yesterday covering these HIMARS attacks on these civilian population areas, um, were you able to turn and uh, talk with your CNN colleagues or the New York Times colleagues or the Associated Press colleagues or the Washington Post colleagues? or the Reuters colleagues, or the BBC colleagues, who are all there, I presume, right? They're, they're, they're probably there covering Donetsk, this genocide that's been happening for nine years. Uh, are you guys all together and go to cafes afterwards and talk about it? No, no, there's there's no Western uh, media in uh, Donetsk. I mean, I, it's, it's very seldom to see any... Uh, uh, any Western uh, mainstream media people in uh, Donbass, uh, in Donetsk or Donbass for that matter. Um, occasionally, one or two will uh, come through for a little short story, but for the most part, they, they're not that interested in what's really happening on this side of the line. Um, they're yeah. be more comfortable sit, sitting on the, uh, the Polish border <laughs> reporting on what they can do from there. But as far as you mentioned Associated Press and Reuters, they do have some freelance uh, people that just kind of these freelancers. I used to be one myself where I just film what you can and sell it to the highest uh, bidder. I stopped that when I realized my footage was being lied about uh, by uh, agencies like Associated Press and uh, Reuters and if not them directly lying about it, them just selling it to a third party and not not uh, managing and controlling that that third party is actually telling the truth about it. And we can, um, we can look at a classic example of this with this attack. Um, we saw 
I filmed this 20 minute 20 I decided to film it without turning off the camera 21 minutes interviews of workers at the place saying there's no military there then it was Ukraine shelling and I come across this um this report from an Australian news channel uh, news uh, 10 first it's called and they just totally blatantly lie about this attack and just try to fit the narrative that they think they should be uh, pushing and blame this attack on Russia, which is totally idiotic and lacking of any moral or journalistic ethics. Russia is again being accused of crimes against humanity after its latest barrage against Ukraine killed at least three people and destroyed a hospital. <laughs> The peace of a Donetsk neighborhood also shattered in the same way. A Russian rocket attack sending people running for shelter. Um, to blame this on uh, Russia. I mean, this is Russian controlled territory. Of course, Ukraine is attacking this, er uh, this uh, territory like they've been doing every day for the last nine years, um, even before Russia uh, it came in when it was m uh, more of a civil war. Um, now, yeah, and it's... this is able to happen because of these freelancers who just sell their uh, work to the highest bidder. And I assume mm. this Australian news channel just bought it from Reuters or Associated Press from someone that had filmed it, uh, that had bought it from uh, someone that filmed it in Donetsk. I, even in their little report saying it's Russia, they run by me while I'm on the ground hiding from these uh, uh, shells. But it's just... Yeah, a stereotypical lying by the Western mainstream media about the situation in Donbass because all they want to do is hide anything that could be uh, negative for Ukraine or even positive uh, for the Russian people or the civilians. And they just don't want to show you the truth. They want to show you only the half of the truth that fit the Western mainstream narrative. Well, Patrick, I'll get you out of here on this question. Um, the people, you, you you speak, that's one of the things you do in your reports is you speak to the people, the citizens. Uh, you go door to door and you talk to the, the old ladies who live in these houses and these neighborhoods and the, the families that are watching their playgrounds being destroyed, uh, the schools that are being hit, etc. Um, what are the people in Donetsk saying now, now that they're part of Russia and the shelling is continuing here, what are they saying as the, as, as the you know, every day this continues to happen? Well, uh, as the people of Donetsk, as most of the world had assumed once Russia came in, as the story was, three days to, to Kiev, and then they assumed it would all be over. They were When Russia fully recognized the Lugansk and Donetsk People's Republic and then uh, moved in officially, uh, the people of Donetsk and Lugansk, they thought, you know, the dying was going to stop. But... Not everything works out that way, as we see, uh, but they're praying that things start to move faster as far as Russia taking more um, territory, because mo a lot of the people in Donetsk, they have family on the other side, just kilometers from the front line, that their family's just waiting for Russia to get to them. Um, and, and it's 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 hard to see these people going through this and being cut away from their families for so long because it, during the last nine years there was areas where you could cross the front line and families could see each other or even going around uh, but now these families are just cut apart and just praying that soon they'll get back together and the, they know that to make that happen Russia has to finish taking the rest of the Donetsk uh, uh, region or what was the Donetsk uh, People's Republic heartbreaking heartbreaking and the western media just ignores uh, this genocide and this tragedy but someone who doesn't is patrick lancaster um he's an amazing journalist we'll have links to patrick's channel in the description below read his watch his latest reports follow along with patrick um you know really one of the bravest one of the bravest people uh covering this war and so thank you so much for your great work patrick we really appreciate you joining us Thank you. Anytime. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.